Benjamin Franklin once said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. In the 1970s, there began a revolution in regards to educational theory. David Kolb introduced an educational concept that reframed the way educators would facilitate learning. Kolb introduced the idea of individualized learning styles. So what's the difference in learning styles? Let's say someone told you not to play with matches. If you learn by hearing, you believe that person, never questioned them, and you did not play with matches. If you learn by seeing, you likely saw someone playing with matches and they got burned, and that's when you believed them. If you learn by doing, then you probably got burned. Each person has a preference in regards to the way that they learn and what motivates them to seek out new knowledge. This webinar will allow us to explore these differences. This webinar will help us identify the steps within the diffusion and adoption process, explore the four aces of effective teaching, and examine four different learning styles. Let's start by taking a step and looking at the diffusion and adoption process. The first step in the process is innovation. An innovation is an idea that's perceived as new by an individual. So if someone sees something that is new to them, that interests them, then they're likely going to want to seek out more information about that process, and that gets us started down the diffusion and adoption process. The next step is diffusion. Diffusion is the process by which innovation spreads. So maybe someone's neighbor came home and showed them this new item that they purchased, or they went to a workshop or a seminar and heard this new idea. It could be something as simple as reading the newspaper or watching the news on television that sparks someone's interest and then the word spreads. Our third step, which has a lot more detail associated with it, is going to be the adoption process itself. So the steps within the adoption process, we see here that we have five steps, the first being awareness. So an individual knows of the idea, but lacks information about it. So they're aware that it exists, but they don't know enough to determine if they want to invest more time and effort into the, to the item or to the concept. So that leads them to have a sparked interest and they gather more information. After they gather information, they're going to evaluate that information. And this is the mental application to the situation, meaning that this is really where they determine if they want to learn more about it or if it's not worth their time. If they do decide that this is something that they want to learn more about, that's going to lead them to the fourth step, which is the trial period. This is where they apply the idea in small scale. If that trial works out well for them and it's something that they're still interested in, that's when they're going to choose to adopt that practice or idea and they're going to use it on a full scale. So what influences the adoption of a new item or a new concept? The first would be, is there an advantage? Is it superior to an old way of doing something? The second is compatibility. Is it consistent to an existing value? Is it something that can be applied to a concept or an item that they're currently using? Or, or is it something that doesn't really fit into their style of living or what they're working on? The third step is complexity. Um, how hard is it to understand? And we see this with older audiences a lot, that if it's truly complex and it's something that's e extremely foreign to them, they may not choose to adopt that idea or that item. Uh, let's take technology, for example. We know that older generations typically uh, tend to struggle a little bit because that's not something that they grew up with. It's something that was introduced to them later on in life, uh, so they had to choose to adopt it. Whereas younger generations grew up with technology all throughout school. Um, if you hand uh, someone who's in elementary school a new smartphone, they will typically be able to navigate through the phone and get it to function or play a game. And it's because that's something that's been embedded within their culture from the time that they were really small. The fourth step in the adoption uh, influence is going to be divisibility. The degree it can be tried on a limited basis. 
Uh, people typically don't want to jump in um, 100% at first. They want to be able to try something on a trial basis. Uh, give it a little test before they decide to invest a lot of either time or money into a new idea or new product. The last adoption influence is going to be uh, the degree that the results are different from others and how we can communicate those. So knowing that it's a reliable product, knowing that it's something that others are interested in will typically tend to be an influence for someone to adopt that new idea or item. So there are different type of adopters and it's important that you identify what type of adopter you are or what type of adopter that you're working with. The first type is going to be an innovator. These people are venturesome, they accept risk, they want to be the first person to try that new idea or gadget out. Uh, they're not afraid to fail. It's something that it just really kind of gives them a thrill to try something new and they want to constantly be progressive. The next adopter is going to be your early adopter. Uh, they're respectful of new products. They enjoy being a role model, but they're still going to be cautious. They're going to do a little bit of homework on either the concept or the item prior to deciding to use that. Our early majority, they're very deliberate. They're going to adopt something only after others have, after they've you know, seen how it works, after they've gathered some feedback, after they've done a lot of research on, the, on either the process or the idea. Our late majority, they're very skeptical. Uh, a lot of pressure is needed for them to try something new. This is a, a group of individuals where this is the last resort. They have to accept this. They have to try this. They're really down to the point where they have no other choices. And then finally, we have our late adopter. These are our traditional, old school kind of people. Uh, the, you'll hear them use phrases like, we've done it this way for so many years in the past and it's always worked, so why do we need to change now? Um, does that mean that they're never going to change? Not necessarily. It just means that they're really set in their ways and the thought of trying something new um, is something that really they struggle with and um, they do have the ability to change, but it's going to take a lot of pressure to get them to change. So we have innovation, diffusion, adoption, and the last step's going to be the decision-making process. The adoption of an innovation, whether it's a product or a concept, always requires a decision by the individual to adopt that and continue using it. So we know what might motivate someone to want to learn something new. Now we need to understand how do we effectively communicate concepts, ideas to people. This is going to bring us to the four aces of effective teaching. So when you're sharing information with others, when you're facilitating a workshop or teaching a class, these are four things that you always need to have integrated into your teaching concepts. Outcomes, clarity, engagement, and enthusiasm. Let's take a closer look at these. The first of the four aces is going to be outcomes. This is very important. You need to let them know where they're going. They need to understand why they are there and what they're going to gain. These, they need to understand they're going to walk away with new knowledge that's going to help them in this way. You also need to have clearly defined goals, and that's why we have our goal setting graphic up here. Um, I like to refer back to SMART goals. SMART goals are extremely popular, and if you follow each one of those five steps when setting goals, you should be successful. Uh, so you need to make sure that your goals are specific, that they're measurable, they're attainable, they're relevant, and they're time bound, that they, it can be measured successfully within a, a certain time frame. So outcomes is gonna be our first ace. Let's see what the second ace is. The second ace is clarity. You need to make it clear and simple. Uh, you're not necessarily giving them something completely new, but rather building on what they already know. Tying in together concepts that they're familiar with, uh, providing them with examples that they can understand, will help increase the clarity, which will increase the amount of learning that takes place. Um, if, you're, if you're introducing a really, really complex new idea, 
break it down into smaller chunks. Uh, make sure that you have activities that they can relate to, that they understand, build on all of those, and finally get to that complex issue. Our third ace is engagement. You really shouldn't be focused on one concept or idea or activity for that matter for more than 30 minutes. The average attention span of adults is about 20 minutes. Um, if you get past that, they start to get bored. They, their mind starts to wander. Uh, they need to get up and move around. They need to be feel engaged. So no more than 30 minutes. Also, people learn what they do, so you need to do it. Have a hands-on activity. Uh, keep in mind the various different styles of learners that could be in the room and have an activity for each of them. And incorporate various teaching styles to accommodate various learning styles. We typically tend to teach with the learning style that we can relate to the most because it's comfortable to us, but remember, in a group, of people, you're going to have a diverse set of learning styles within that group. Make sure everyone feels engaged. So that final ace, the final ace is enthusiasm. Learners respond to positive teachers. If you hate teaching it, they're going to hate learning it. They're going to pick up on that vibe that this is something that you're not into. So you need to make sure that it's an exciting uh, experience for everyone. Remember, learning is a matter of intensity not elapsed time. So we know why people want to adopt new concepts. We've understood the four aces of effective teaching. And during the four aces, we talked a lot about being cognizant of the different learning styles. So what are those various learning styles? Let's take a look. Different people are motivated to learn in different ways. We're going to talk about four different styles of learning. Visual verbal, visual nonverbal, tactile kinesthetic, and auditory verbal. Let's take a closer look at each one of these. Visual verbal learners learn best when information is presented to them in a written format. They like to study alone in a quiet room. Um, they'll rewrite notes that they take while you're speaking, and they might even go home and type out those rewritten notes a, a day later. They have to see that information written down, and that's how they're going to recall it. So once they've learned it, they're recalling what they visually saw written down on a paper. Our next style of learning is going to be visual nonverbal learners. These individuals learn best when the information is presented as a picture or a graphic. They enjoy film, video, maps, and charts. They don't necessarily like to work in groups. Uh, when trying to memorize something, they're going to recall the way that they visually saw that, that concept. And visual nonverbal learners tend to have an artistic side. So you might see them doodling on the side of a paper or creating their own chart or graphic in the margin of a page. That's just going to help them remember that easier. Uh, things we need to keep in mind when we're constructing a workshop or a lesson, uh, visual nonverbal learners enjoy printed materials. They really pick up on facial expressions and body language because what is seen is what they're going to remember. Tactile kinesthetic learners is going to be our third group we're going to talk about. These individuals learn best when they're engaged in physical activity. They enjoy lab settings. They learn best from demonstrations. Uh, when trying to study, they'll use note cards. If they need to remember something, they're going to create those note cards. They're going to quiz themselves. They're going to ask others to help quiz them. Uh, it's just the way that they learn best. They also enjoy using a whiteboard or flip charts to problem solve. Um, they like to write things out. They like to brainstorm ideas and use concept maps. So the more they can touch something or sense it, uh, the better they're going to be. So when we're constructing a workshop, or a lesson, we need to keep in mind that kinesthetic learners take into account emotions, actions, movement, taste, and smell. What they can feel is what they're going to remember. Our final group here is going to be auditory learners. They learn best when they hear the information. They really benefit from class discussions because it opens up that whole paradigm of digging a little bit deeper and, and making the connection with the concepts. 
They like to participate in small groups. And when trying to recall something, they remember how they heard it. So if we remember back, we've got our visual learners who try to remember how they saw it. Auditory learners remember how they heard it. Spoken words, sounds, what is heard and said is what they're going to walk away with and remember. So what have we learned in this brief webinar? Well, there are four steps within the diffusion and adoption process. This is where people are going to determine if they want to learn more, if they want to invest in something. So remembering these four steps is extremely important. We've got innovation, the item is perceived as new, diffusion, how they're going to spread the word or how that concept spreads to the public, adoption, uh, we need to remember that we have steps in the adoption process. We have various type of adopters. And then finally, making that decision to continue or discontinue use of a product or concept. The four aces of effective teaching that we need to remember whenever we're facilitating learning. Um, make sure you have clear outcomes and goals set. Make sure you have clarity in terms of, of describing concepts and topics. Make sure everyone is engaged and that there is enthusiasm. And when constructing that lesson, make sure that you take into account the four styles of learning and that there's a piece in there for all different types of learners, whether they're visual verbal, visual nonverbal, tactile kinesthetic, or auditory learners. Here we have our sources listed and my contact information as well. Remember, Everyone learns in a different manner. We all have our own unique learning style. Uh, we need to keep that in mind whenever we're trying to facilitate learners with groups regardless of age. I really enjoy uh, sharing this information with you. I hope I can share more in the future. I appreciate you tuning into this webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and I'll try to answer them. And I look forward to sharing more with you in the future. Thank you.